Hi everybody, welcome to Daily Deco. Today's episode of Daily Deco is sponsored by our very own Teesprings, but more about that later, uh, wow. because we might have a 15% uh, off offer. Um, who knows, we might even have a 50% offer. Uh, I can't promise you that. I might have just made that up on the spot. Mm. But uh, I can well, it's definitely... It's better than my 100% say... offer last week that I suggested. <laughs> so Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite as generous as Sean. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <coughs> Simply Scuba News, uh, so we've had a fresh drop of Hollis equipment, as well as Apex, some Aqualung, uh, Shear Water, as well as some Atomic Aquatics, um, and a few Oceanic uh, sort of bits and bobs as well. Uh, so the website is really starting to uh, sort of populate, which is quite nice. Um, so if you're looking for something, then yeah, definitely head over to, uh, to simplyscuba.com and um, sort of see what is in stock. Uh, we're also starting to get some... Um, our uh, photography studio is starting to uh, sort of photograph some of the uh, the gear. So again, some nice uh, sort of swish new images of Lovely. the products. Um, so um, so yeah, for definitely other, check those other, out. For other scuba diving retailers to nick and stick on their site. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I um, I saw one the other day, and it was on um, it was on a blog about scuba diving hoses. And uh, when I very first started at uh, at Simply Scuba Go, all those years ago, uh, one of the first things that I did was a uh, sort of a comprehensive blog on like which hose size you should get for what uses. Nerd. And I um, I I like yeah I like photographed the uh, the hoses and uh, I put sort of color coded boxes on them so that they really and of course those images are on the, someone else's website. So I was like, oh, how can I copyright strike? this website um, and it got to the point where it's like I this isn't worth my time so um, <laughs> uh, but yeah <clears throat> but yeah that's the thing because uh, we put a lot of effort and we actually always have it's quite nice uh, sort of moving into a new company that has the same kind of ethics in that um, instead of just copying and pasting the uh, the same image from the manufacturer uh, we actually take all of our own images so we have a photographer who takes those photographs so that you know this is what is going to arrive and this is what's in the box with it so um, yeah we, we just think that's always a, a nice service um, no, it is it's very good it makes you stand out yeah. of the crowd a little bit rather than using the generic stock images of a watch people go yeah. oh that's a that's a slight angle that's a different angle they might have something something different or yes. you see more <clears throat> detail than other websites it's also nice to physically see what comes with your dive computer or whatever it is um, because a lot of the times you, you'll see a picture of the computer which is great but you don't see how it arrives or sort of what comes with it no. so um, a lot of people they'll um, they'll order all these like extra bits and it turns out it came with it anyway so um, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we kind of want to be ahead of the curve and um, yeah be as useful as possible you need doubles of everything guys when buying scuba diving stuff doubles of everything so you need two dive computers redundancy two you need the, the good kind. <laughs> exactly. <It's good clears throat> Anyway, so, uh, so on to the first news story. So the yeah, first man. news story comes uh, from Hong Kong. Um, and this is a, um, a researcher who has basically... I think Sean and I spoke about this uh, quite a while ago yeah, we when, um, when it first... Um, sort of became kind of a thing. But, um, but a researcher out in, uh, in Hong Kong... Uh, now, if you go to the Hong Kong markets, you can buy almost anything if you go to the, uh, to the right place. And um, obviously there's a, a huge trade in shark fins, which we all know is a horrible thing. And um, obviously there are like some species that you can legally um, sort of import and export and sell. Um, and there are others that obviously are illegal. And, um, and after they're like, processed and dried and all that kind of stuff it is quite hard to physically tell oh well this is obviously such and such so um so what they've come up with is a dna kind of toolkit so um just with a uh, sort of a quick sample you can uh, sort of determine the species of the shark and uh, cross-reference that against a database and this guy's basically been going through um sort of different um 
sort of shipments of uh, sort of shark fins and um, yeah sort of finding that oh yeah no this is a uh, sort of an endangered species this is illegal and um, yeah really sort of uh, sort of making it hard so um, effectively like cutting off is like right well this supplier um, obviously deals in it and uh, is coming from this place in like the South America and all this kind of stuff so um, they said uh, using the toolkit, Hong Kong Customs officials earlier this year intercepted an illegal shipment of 26 tons of thresher shark fins uh, bound from Ecuador. So bear in mind, 26 tons is very heavy, and that's just the fins, uh, which is just terrible. So um, we really do need to uh, sort of do something. Uh, another bust in September in Peru seized 11 tons of uh, illegal fins. So um, yeah, we really do need to do something about this. And um, and these sort of testing kits, they say it costs like a dollar for each test, um, which is hardly um, sort of exorbitant. But um, yeah, they're saying that it's really making a, a very sort of quick and efficient way of just going, boom, no, that's, that's illegal. Um, yeah, so hopefully this should sort of start pushing the um, uh, sort of each part of that chain to basically go, oh, you know what, no, um, <clears throat> it's costing me money, uh, yeah. I'm facing jail time, all this kind of stuff, I'm not even going to try importing it, I'm not going to buy from you anymore, and then the uh, sort of it sort of goes up the chain until the uh, sort of fishermen who are actually catching the illegal uh, species, so um, yeah, hopefully... Yeah. This is the uh, the first step in a uh, in a much bigger movement to uh, sort of really crack down on uh, illegal shark fishing. What's really nice as well with this story, like you like you said, Mark, we've had covered something like this or this story before, like a, like a year or so ago. So it's nice to mm. see that. Where I think in the article we speak about testing and like obviously they're they're rolling this out, but they're only going to do some tests for it. The fact that yeah. it's gone from the testing to actually catching. And, and you know, actually physically stopping <clears throat> shark fins, you know, carrying on to their journey to their final destination, I think, I think it's amazing. Mm. And like you say, it's very inexpensive for what it is. So yeah, hopefully this will more more <coughs> systems like this will be used. And also as well, this this will be a staple for it to be used for something else. So obviously the the machines themselves are obviously targeting sharks. All you do is maybe update the program to see if there's anything else, you know, to, yeah, to yeah, DNA just different trace. database. Yeah, so it could be. Yeah, this is this could be the start of something where, um, yeah, just adding an extra step to to potentially stop any illegal shark finning or anything else illegal going mm. into another country. I think so. <clears throat> it's a fantastic move, and it's it's as mm. I say, it's nice to have that article where we're saying, oh, they're testing this out to actually having will real world uh, consequences as well. It's really cool. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's cool, man. Nice Interesting. Yeah, man. What what's next? Uh, the next news story comes from the Bermuda Triangle, um, which is uh, is basically this area between Bermuda, uh, Puerto Rico, and Florida, I believe. It makes kind of a triangle, and uh, there's a lot of um, like mysterious like plane crashes and uh, sort of ship sinkings and stuff. Um, now, I've only had a a, a cursory glance at this. Uh, I believe you've read it more. Yes, I have. So I can <coughs> take it if you want. So. Basically, Basically, yep. it's the anniversary of, a f uh, basically, on December the 5th, 1945, uh, five U.S. Navy torpedo bombers known as Flight 19 took off from their Florida base on a routine training mission. Um, and, but basically, within hours, uh, the 14 crew members and one of their aircraft just disappeared. Mm. Like mm. the standard Bermuda, I can't even say that word. <coughs> <laughs> Bermuda. Yeah, the Bermuda, the, the standard thing happens. And basically, it's now the anniversary, and a scuba diving team are going to start scouring the waters to try and find the wreckage. Uh, basically, okay, it's a bit cool. weird, though. Yeah, so basically, the article itself goes into the history of what happened. We all know the, the story of the Bermuda Triangle. I can't even say no. it, Bermuda, whatever, the triangle. That's we it. all know the story of it. But yeah, the fact that now a team are dedicating... 
um, their time and effort and money and resources to try and find this wreckage is really, really good. Uh, they don't have much to go on. So the last report or the last um, radio message from the actual Flight 19 was as follows. Uh, the commander reported, we are entering white water. Nothing seems right. We don't know where we are. The water is green, no white. And that was it. So there was no... Um, no obviously back then you know th there was probably no proper transition or like like um tracking devices or anything like yeah. that <clears throat> so they don't have much to go on but obviously it sparks the the anniversary and yeah basically a team of divers are going to be scanning the area scanning the waters to try and find this wreckage and because so many other ships boats tend to go missing in this area it would not surprise me as well um, if they find other things, other wreckages of things, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, you never know. It's just a um, it's just a cool little story. So the article itself is it's pinned in the sources section in the mm. um the description below. So if you want to properly go and read it, you know, they go on to UFO conspiracies and all that sort of thing, which I didn't really want to blabber on <clears throat> about, you know, it literally mm -hmm. goes on to what you know the unknown causes of all of a sudden they just go over this certain area and then poof, they just disappear yeah. um which is really good but yeah <clears throat> you, you know the fact that there's going to be some dedicated you know marine team and scuba divers that are going to scan the area and try and try and find the uh the, the wreckage and obviously the, the lives that were lost in that wreckage as well the 13 or 14 mm. soldiers that that died or disappeared should we say um because yeah. they've not found bodies yet so so I just thought it was rather a rather <clears throat> curious story, really. It's quite yeah, nice that no. you know. Yeah. <clears throat> it is we, interesting. Would you want to do that though? Would you want to try and dive and find this footage in the in the triangle? Yeah. You yeah, might disappear I'd, yourself. I'd be into that. That that is my kind of thing, unfortunately. Um. <laughs> well, it's nice knowing, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, no, it's interesting. I mean, I um, one of my favourite books. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. You it's can't like Treasure read. Hunters or something. You can't <laughs> read. Um, and um, and it's all about a um, a pair of wreck hunters, and they're they're searching for this like Spanish galleon or something that was like a, a pirate ship. Okay. And uh, this this is like back in the eighties when it was all a bit loosey goosey, mm. and. Um, uh, yeah, they're um, it sort of goes in like how they like sort of map the areas and sort of found and like so they went back into like the, uh, the sort of the history and uh, talking to local fishermen and like because they typically know the areas really well and um, and yeah eventually they ended up uh, sort of finding this shipwreck spoiler alert and um, yeah no it, I, I love it. all that kind of stuff Pill pillaging yeah. it stealing it sealing selling bits yeah I think because it it was like this pirate ship. They're like we, we yeah we we think it's uh, it's got something interesting and yeah. uh, and they went into the history of the uh, the actual pirate and um, sort of how he um, sort of did his stuff but yeah. no it, it was quite interesting yeah so as I said that story if you want to read more into it and go deep dive into UFO UFO conspiracies it's pinned under sources in the description below but yeah I thought that was a just a really cool story yes. good old scuba diver. and good luck to the team that. Are, Scanning the waters and gonna dive the waters yeah. to see if they can find the wreck. Yeah, Good work, yeah. Guys. Just hopefully just make you find sure it. Yeah, and if you tell, don't find tell, it, tell people where you're going. Yeah, yeah. Tell people where you're going, <laughs> and if you don't find it, you might find something else that's cool. Yeah, like the, the Polar Express. It's Christmas. Mm. Ho ho ho! You might find it. Who knows? Yeah. It's the triangle, guys. <coughs> it's the triangle. Anyway, guy. Apparently, we're sponsored. Is it? This yeah. is our first sponsor. Yeah, um, so I've never heard of this company before. It's called Simply Scuba, um, mm. and they have a, a Teespring account. Sounds dodgy, which mate. Is basically a um, so yeah. We basically have our uh, our own merchandise store. Uh, I'm wearing my um, sort of bolt snap T-shirt today. Um, um, I so put my yes. Wild Stallions T-shirt on again. Um, so yeah, up until the end of December, we're offering everybody 15% off of their order if they use the promo code Daily Deco at the checkout stage. Um, so basically, head down to the uh, sort of link down below, the Teespring's link. Uh, that will take you to our store where you can look through all of our uh, Simply Scuba T-shirts and hoodies and mugs and socks and all sorts of bits and bobs, phone cases. Um, and then you pick and choose the size and the color that you like. Uh, and then when you place your order 
order, obviously you're gonna get 15% off if you use the daily deco all one word um, promo code. Um, and then when you press place my order, then um, basically they make your t-shirt or phone case or whatever it is then and there, and then they ship it directly to you. So there's a sort of minimal waste. Um, yeah, that's that's about it, really. I, I don't want to waffle on too long because I'm sure you've heard it all before. <laughs> I've never heard it. Yeah. So the uh, the next news story. This comes from <laughs> Dan um, Divers Alert Network. Uh, not just my mate Dan. Oh. Um, Dan's cool. So He's they, a cool guy. Yeah. So they. Um, Divers Alert Network, they do a lot of the like, sort of medical side of scuba diving, making sure that um, they're, they're doing all sorts of research and bits and bobs. And uh, at the moment, they're, um, they're doing an initial survey for a, um, a study that they're sort of planning to run, and it's all based on COVID. So what they basically, at the moment, they're not entirely sure what the sort of short-term and long-term effects of COVID-19 are on scuba divers. Obviously, our respiratory system is very important to scuba divers. Um, so they, um, so they want to do uh, some studies. Now, I, I don't believe they're particularly invasive, um, but they're basically asking for participants to um, to sort of apply um i think it's if you have contracted covid <laughs> i was gonna say it'd be a um, bit silly if you hadn't <clears throat> like yeah mate this 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 covid yeah. scenario it would it would be very weird if they like unless they go right okay here's your here's your covid sample Take <laughs> yeah <it." laughs> yeah just just drink this um drink the kool-aid yeah. That's it. So um, you qualify for this study if you have or had a confirmed or suspected COVID-19 infection. Uh, if you decide to participate, you will receive a series of up to nine online surveys over the course of the next five years at various points in time uh, with regards to dates, symptoms and practices during your infection recovery and returning to diving. This initial survey, the one that they're doing at the moment, should not take longer than 15 to 20 minutes and each follow-up survey no longer than five to ten minutes to complete so um yeah if you have caught covid um quite a few people have um if you have a uh, or if you've had a positive test result um <clears throat> and you are a scuba diver then this would be uh, sort of very useful for research uh, sort of going forwards um so yeah, there'll, there'll be a link down in the description below to go to the uh, sort of Dan uh, sort of initial survey uh, where they're just going to go through your uh, your sort of vital statistics and then um, they'll probably sort of add you onto the list. I think they're only looking for a thousand um, participants, but obviously it'll be better if they have like more, more um, yeah. sort of yeah representative samples that they can study and, and um, it's, it's for a good cause. Yeah, as you say, this sort of thing's really important because. Mm. You, you know what I mean? COVID-19 is so unknown. This is a new virus for everyone, so we don't know what the knock-on effects are. So if mm. there is a, especially, you know, if, if you've got it and then you do this, you do this survey every couple of years or whatever, and, and yeah. you, you know, you submit your changes, <clears throat> like just just the more information we can get about the, the virus in general is better. But yeah, if you can, yeah. we could somehow link it to scuba diving. So then, you, you know, because this, this COVID nineteen, it's not it's here to stay. It's like the common cold now, or the or the flu season. It's going to be here. You know, even even the vaccines. Yeah. We don't know whether the vaccines are going to last two, three years, or a couple of months. You know, it could be like the the flu shot where every year we have to go into the doctors to get our COVID shots. Yeah, yeah, because the strain can change. Exactly, um, it's always evolving, yeah. isn't it? You know, like yeah. in a, was it minks in Norway yeah. or someone? You know, they, they'd already found a, a new strain of COVID thanks to them, so they have to literally like just kill every single mink within the country. Yes. Um, yeah, so yeah, the, zoonotic. <clears throat> the more information we can get about the virus, the better. And again, mm. like, like Mark said, like the your breathing, your lungy lungs is kind of important in scuba diving. Um, yeah. So yeah, if, if we... there's any um, knock and effect from COVID from that, mm. the more information we know, the better. Yeah, yeah, because it, it has varying effects on different people. Some people don't even know if they've had it. Some people have long lasting, obvious damage. Um, but it's a matter of, oh, well, if you were asymptomatic, do, do you really know it's not had any kind mm. of effects on like oxygen uptake if you're diving on nitrox 
is it really having the same effect and decompression? Are you sort of on gassing and off gassing at the same rates as you were before you caught COVID? Um, these are all the things that I imagine they're going to start sort of looking into. Right. Um, so yeah, if you um, if you are interested and you do sort of have the time, then uh, yeah, definitely uh, sort of click the link down in the description below. Yeah, um, and uh, and do your part. <coughs> do your part. Yes. Do it now. Yes. <laughs> Um, and the final news story um, comes from the Buddy Dive Resort. Um, they've started up a new um, foundation yeah. for uh, sort of local kids and uh, adolescents and young adults um, to basically learn how to scuba dive, from what I understand. Yeah. Um, so it, um, it started with um, sort of Murph, um, who, uh, who sadly passed about this time last year. And... Um, and he worked for Buddy Dive Resort uh, as a dive master from 1993 um, all the way up until 2019, helping to uh, sort of teach people to dive. And um, and he was well known by uh, sort of guests and uh, sort of people. He was always a uh, sort of a bright and shiny uh, sort of chap. And um, and yeah, when when he passed, they um, they felt like they kind of they had to uh, do something. So mm -hmm. they've started the um, uh, what is it, the Murph and Haynar Foundation. That is the one. Um, <clears throat> Who um, who are basically what what their main sort of objective is is to um, yeah sort of teach um, and make scuba diving more accessible for the next generation, um, which is just wonderful. Yeah, uh, it is. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a good it's a good cause, you know, if, especially as well. If like I don't know, not not necessarily rough areas, but if you're you're growing up, you've got a hard, you know, you're having a hard time or whatever. You need to to relax. You, you know, the, the opportunity to go scuba diving is gonna. We all know it helps with the mental mental health, and to mm. to approach that that scene into the younger generation who are worried about their future. Like, I mean, we all do anyway. But you know, everything is almost the end of the world when you're a, when you're a young adult. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> from, from your band breaking up to your girlfriend or your boyfriend leaving you to <laughs> them changing a recipe in your cereal it's all yeah. end of world stuff so to have to have an opportunity where you can actually of oh, this foundation to help teach younger younger generations young adults as they put it to, to scuba dive which is gonna mm. pull focus on them it's gonna help them relax um and you know just yeah open up a whole a whole new world i think yeah. it's absolutely fantastic yeah that's it a new uh, a new community for them and yeah. uh, new sort of job prospects as well sort of working in and around the water um so yeah it's a it's a wonderful foundation and um yeah it, it's nice that they're sort of remembering uh sort of these people so um yeah yeah, no, it's, it's really good. It was just a nice story um, that I believe on. you spotted. Yes. Um, so, yeah. so it's one of those things where it's thank you. It's a, it's a it's a sad <laughs> one because obviously someone had passed, but it's nice to have. It's nice to have. Um, what's a the legacy? Word? Yes, a legacy. <clears throat> that is a, it. A sil silver lining. Yeah. Which will hopefully help <laughs> generations to come. I think it's really really cool. And if you want to check mm. them out, I've pinned the link. To their website in the comments below. Um, cool. Julio. So uh, and that's it. I know you it? want to end it. Yeah, it is. It is it. But obviously, oh, no. when you to um, announce something, people. Obviously, the last Daily Deco we spoke about uh, butter, butter scotch or whatever, brandy butter. Oh no! Let, let the, me just delete the post, that post. The, the post <laughs> went live. It's just gone live as we're filming. Oh, so is obviously it? Obviously, you're okay. seeing this. If you're watching this now, it's, the, the result's going to be changed. But I just wanted to give you a live, a live as of recording update. So uh, it, the vote is: Should Mark make a nautical brandy <laughs> butter recipe video? Uh, the answers are yes, <coughs> definitely, and no. Thank you. Funnily enough, there's been 28 votes, and at the moment, in the lead is yes at 46%, 18% on definitely, and 36% say no, thank you, because they probably don't watch Daily Deco. I yeah. don't know what the heck is going on about a brandy butter video. Yeah, yeah no, no thank you is doing quite well. I'm, no, I'm going to endorse oh, this. Oh, is it? Oh, is thank, it? Thank you, everybody. <laughs> and there's one comment, so as of recording, it's from a Flying Walrus 42 awesome name, by the way, and he says, heck yeah. I'll gladly watch. <laughs> Get on that, right, guys. We're, we're it's turning into a cooking channel. Page. Do not let Mark win. 
We want to see this video. <laughs> the new year, second of the second or the, the first week in January, we'll get it filmed. <clears throat> All right, I'll I'll get my Ainsley Harriet on. Yeah. Well, as I say, I don't know. <laughs> it will be open. It'll, we're gonna do a trump. It's gonna be open up until I get the right result that I want. Oh yeah, which it's is, rude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there we go. I thought I'd just, yeah, while that, while that was going live, literally that went live. Well, actually, that went live at like quarter past seven this morning. But yeah, I thought I'd give you ago. guys a, a, a live update, even though when you're watching this, it's not going to be live and the result will be different. <laughs> but go vote. And if you don't know what the hell we're talking about, <laughs> this is the first time you watch Daily Deco, watch Monday's episode. Yeah. Yes. I'm pretty sure, so, yes, it was Monday's episode, because that's yeah. when I mentioned that, yeah, because it went live today. Yes. Okay, yep, yep. And today's Monday, but you're watching this on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, showing people behind the um, <laughs> behind Ooh. the green curtain. <laughs> well, the last, the, one of the last um, Daily Decos, she was like, happy Wednesday, and then like, dude, this video's going live on Thursday. <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh. Uh, uh, Days, days mean nothing to us anymore. Um, I've been recording stuff for like post Christmas, so I have no idea where we are. Like we're, in the we, year. Are, we are on the cusp of completely finishing Christmas videos this week. Other than obviously Daily Deco, yeah. I'm already looking at New Year. Exciting. New Year, new gear. <clears throat> new Year, new yep. gear, new beer, new brandy butter. Nautical cool brandy butter. Yeah, yeah, I'll get my um, my Jamie Oliver on. Cool. Oh no, you, um, you're better than Jamie Oliver. He's he's won like Emmys. <laughs> yeah, he's a chef. <laughs> he's a chef. He shouldn't be winning Emmys. He should be winning like chef awards, like the the Golden he's... Spoon or something. No, he's Mi a TV Michelin. presenter now. Michelin. Michelin. <laughs> it's not Michelin. Michelin. Michelin tires. That's it. I still love the fact that it's a tyre company that uh, that came up with the Michelin Awards to basically get people to drive further and wear out their tyres so that they bought, buy more tyres. That's where yes. it came from. I love that. That is why <laughs> you also need to buy two scuba diving of everything. Yeah. Redundance backups, <clears throat> you need it. One of those things. That's been... Anyway, let's, let's end the show. We're waffling. Yeah, yeah. Although there was a perfect segue to another new story about car tires, but I'll uh, I'll mention that tomorrow. Oh, there's someone making a reef out. Of it. No, 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 no. That's spoilers. I don't want to know. I don't yeah, want to know. No, no. Cliff, cliffhanger, mate. <gasps> <coughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, if you have any interesting news stories uh, about car tires or scuba diving, uh, <laughs> or then let Bitcoin us know down in the comments or below. Whatever else we spoke <laughs> about last week. So, um, yeah, or brandy butter, who knows? Um, but yeah, uh, any questions, uh, let us know down in the comments below. All of those will be answered on Friday's Q and A. Um, yeah, as ever, thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving. Stay classy, scuba divers.